Ladies and gentlemen, the invocation is delivered by Fort Knox Chaplain Colonel Roger D. Kreiner, who served in Vietnam from 1970 to 71 as a combat medic with the 25th Infantry Division, Delta Troop, Three Quarters Cavalry Reconnaissance Platoon. Please remain standing for the invocation. Please join me as we pray, and I ask that you pray, pray in your tradition as I pray in mine. Almighty God, we have assembled today to honor and celebrate the homecoming of these brave men and women that served our nation. Every one of these returning Vietnam veterans are true American heroes in the eyes of their children, grandchildren, and are all attending today's ceremony. We, 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 we remember with them today the hot, humid days, the wet, monsoon seasons, and the dense jungle floor that challenged mobility and survivability. These harsh conditions impacted their lives daily as they survived the horrors of war and combat for so long. But thanks be to God, today we present ourselves with honor and we present ourselves with pride and we honor all the Vietnam veterans with a hero's welcome. Lord, we also remember the 58,000 Americans that paid the ultimate sacrifice and the 304,000 that were wounded during the eight hostile years of combat operations in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. Today, we recognize that years have gone by without proper recognition. But today, oh Lord, today, we have gathered to celebrate that long-awaited home welcome home and our gratitude is expressed for the selfless service and continued loyalty that these brave men and women demonstrated in their service to God and to country. We gather here today with grateful hearts and with overwhelming emotions to welcome home these Vietnam warriors. Welcome home, welcome home, Vietnam veterans. Hoo-ah and amen. We're delighted to have several distinguished guests in our audience today. A commanding general, United States Army Accessions Command at Fort Knox, and accompanied by the First Lady of Fort Knox. Please welcome Lieutenant General Benjamin C. Frankly and his wife, Susan. <laughs> Serving District 10 in Hardin and Jefferson Counties and Chairman of the Veterans Committee, Please welcome Kentucky State Senator Elizabeth Torrey. <laughs> Serving her third term as mayor of Radcliffe, she's moving government, business, and community forward. Please welcome Radcliffe's finest, Mayor Sheila Enyard, and her husband, Robert. <laughs> Serving in the 26th District, Hardin County, Please welcome Kentucky State Representative Tim Moore and his wife, Amy. <laughs> Elected to his second term in 2007, this retired Army Lieutenant Colonel leads Kentucky's fourth largest county. Please welcome Hardin County Judge Executive Harry Berry. A Vietnam veteran from 66 to 67, he served with the 4th Division, Central Highlands, and commanded the 3rd Battalion, 8th Infantry, Pleiku Dacto, Van B. Tuit, Vietnam, and later served as the Commanding General, United States Army Armor Center in Fort Knox, 1978 to 1980. Please welcome retired Army Major General Thomas Lynch. former commissioner of the Kentucky Department of Veterans Affairs. 
He served from 67 to 68 as district advisor and province operations officer during the Tet Offensive, Hindu Vietnam. Please welcome retired Army Brigadier General Les Beavers and his wife, Brenda. The Command Sergeant Major of the United States Army Sessions Command and Fort Knox. Please welcome Command Sergeant Major John Troxell and his wife, Sandra. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Benjamin C. Frankley assumed command of the United States Army Sessions Command in Fort Monroe, Virginia on May 18, 2007. Prior to this assignment, he served as the Commanding General, 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry, at Fort Drum, New York, and commanded Combined Joint Task Force 76 in 2006-2007 in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom. General Frankly is a veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. He is a 1975 graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lieutenant General Benjamin C. Frankly. Senator Torrey, Representative Moore, Mayor Inyart, Judge Berry, fellow general officers, Command Sergeant Major Troxel, commanders, Command Sergeants Majors, soldiers and civilians, friends of Fort Knox, but most importantly, our Vietnam veterans and their families. Thank you for joining us this morning for the Fort Knox Vietnam Veterans Welcome Home Ceremony. It is indeed a beautiful morning at historic Fort Knox and it is wonderful to see our Vietnam veterans, soldiers, sailors, airmen, marine, coast guardsmen, and their families here today. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the soldiers, civilians, family members, contractors of Fort Knox, welcome home. As a part of the Radcliffe, Elizabethtown, Vine Grove, and West Point communities celebrating these four days of your service, we are proud to host the first event and say again, welcome home. You have fulfilled a time-honored duty to serve our nation. You deployed to the jungles of Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos to defend freedom and our way of life. And more than 35 years after Americans left Vietnam, there are still 2,000 prisoners of war and missing in action. So would you all join me in a, movement, in a moment of silence as we think about the 58,000 who laid down their life for their fellow man, of those who were wounded, of those who are still missing in action. We say in our army, we will never forget. Let us take this moment and never forget those who could not be here with us today. Amen. The myths of Vietnam, largely promoted in Hollywood, portrayed you as unwilling draftees who did not want to serve your country or in the military. The reality is that two-thirds of the 2.6 million Americans who served in Vietnam were volunteers. All of our military were well-trained professionals who engaged in countless engagements and battles in remote and complex locations, such as the Audrang Valley at Landing Zone X-ray in November of 1965, in the Siege of Khe Sanh in January of 1968, in the Tet Offensive of August of 1968, in the Saigon in March of 1968, in the Easter Tide Offensive in March through April of 72, and it goes on and on, where our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marine fought valiantly day in and day, day out. Vietnam was a clash of cultures and a clash of generations. As soldiers, sailors, airmen, marine, and coast guardsmen fighting in America's most divisive war since the Civil War, you fought in a foreign country against guerrilla tactics, against a determined enemy that included women and children. <laughs> 